Hey, traders, Dennis Wilborn. It is Good Friday. I hope you're planning on and having a great Easter weekend. Um, big question I have going into this weekend that I'm going to be answering in today's video is who's in charge of this market, the bulls or the bears? And plus, I have a three uh, process tip for you to show you can how you can set up higher probability trades. And so with that, let's go ahead and get underway and push the go button. And uh, who's that guy? Wow, what a handsome looking devil. <laughs> anyway, uh, as we get ready to go into today's session, I am really excited because I, not only do I have the answering that question, but I have also four stocks to show to you that are going to, I think, catch your attention because some of them are good to the upside, some of them are good to the downside. And so away we go. It is time for Trade Your Money to Wealth and Financial Freedom and some stock pickups. Now, our regular cohorts of Steve and Anil are not with us today, but I'll be covering some stocks that I think it caught my attention during my review. And just a reminder, if you haven't gotten it yet, our watch list every week are, um, is already up and on the website. So uh, as you watch this video, you can go over and find that new uh, Power Rank Elite watch list for you. Here's where we're sitting, uh, just tracking right up the 40% line. I'm very pleased with that, especially considering that the, here's where we were last week, up about 10%. It has actually been a very good week in the market. Um, Index is down pretty significantly after <clears throat> an attempt to jump out and, and race higher, ran right square dab into some moving average resistance and said, eh, not today. And so we're up now 16%. And, the, and compared to the S&P, we're beating it by 23.95%. Very pleased with that. So let's jump in and look at the indexes. And I'm also trying to shift things up a little bit, folks, to... Uh, basically shorten the time frame and move us from, from point to point very, very quickly. Uh, I called to your attention on the, on Thursday, I called to your, or on Friday, or Wednesday, excuse me, I called to your attention, hey, we are getting a bullish engulfing on the S&P right there, plus the TSI was starting to pull up, but I also highlighted to you that we were suspect of this and also of the uh, uh, TSI momentum indicator not actually crossing and suspect that price actions were staying short of, short of what? the uh, All the moving averages, that clump of moving averages. And sure enough, we get a sell-off on, on um, Friday, on Thursday, excuse me, that's yesterday. Now, it hasn't totally reversed us to the downside, but it is a pretty good indication that one, we were not sold off enough. It was not in the lower extremities of the reversal zone, and we still have momentum pointing down. And the uh, the bears just rejected the heck out of that one right at the uh, moving average lines. And so it looks like we're set up for more downside. What else do we have going on? What about the NASDAQ as represented by the Qs? Similar story, only though we closed a little bit deeper and price, action, price actions had not really gotten back up into that moving average cluster. That moving average cluster that you see me highlighting right there, uh, you know, centered around the 20 is acting as strong resistance. We break out of the low on uh, you know this low right here at 338.21, we will probably revisit all the way back down to a round trip down to 317. 317. It might, and this is a you know I don't know how much of a might. It might slow down about the 70 uh, uh, 23 percent retracement at the 330 level. I wouldn't bet on that. So anything midsection of Friday's candlestick for a potential downside trade, or if we gap down, that could be a gap and go where the go is, guess where? The go would be to the downside, to the downside. So that's what we've got going on, the Qs. Russell. Russell, actually, you know, it's still holding up a little bit better, but, and the big but in this particular situation is, 
price action is taking place below the moving averages. I mean, that's just the sweet and simple of it. We fail on Friday, uh, on Monday, and continue to open down. Watch out for a round trip all the way back down to the 190, 190 you know, the 188 to 190 level, down into this support zone. That's where, uh, and what would potentially happen with that is the TSI would roll over, momentum had shifted again, and it may get all the way down into the lower ex uh, oversold extremes. So we'll just uh, take a look at this is a bearish, a small right, bearish um, dark cloud after a three-day uh, uh, move up. And so anticipating a move, you know, if we continue, if we move, if we open down, we're probably going down. And I like this area right in, in that area around the 191 level. So that's what we've got going with the uh, the indexes. What about the stocks that, uh, that I'm keeping my eye on for you? Well, first of all, let's start off with Apple. Apple, I had put out as a potential um, trade on Wednesday, and Apple basically had rolled up bullish harami, bullish engulfing, again, hung up right there at the 820 combo. And what happens on Friday, uh, Thursday, excuse me, we basically reverse course, the bears in control, pushing it down lower. Now we did come to a, a, a screeching halt right at the 50% retracement. That may hold. If it doesn't, look for a retracement all the way back down here to the 200 day moving average, about the, what is that? About the 158 level. So you're looking at about eh, $7 or so to the downside. We could get a complete 100% retracement, which would put us down to 151. So just keep your eyeball on that, as you can see. And this is where being cautious when, when we're getting a potential momentum shift before momentum is added, it's, it's real oversold condition is something you just have to be careful with. I mean, it, it basically, since it did not cross to the upside, that was a clue that on this candlestick right here, that was a clue that this signal could be weaker than we expected. AVGO, again, what's going on with that? AVGO, really nice move to the downside. Uh, hit right off of the moving averages. And where's it likely to go? Well, it's likely to go at least to the 200 or look to your left. I'm talking 535. That's my downside target. And so any type of a move back up into the midsection of Friday's candle, that's the middle third, I would look to trade a reversal signal off that to the downside. Or if I get a gap down, a gap and go, watch that that could, uh, that could uh, confirm to the downside with a stop down here at about, eh, let's say 250. And that's about $23 down below where we're at right now. How would I handle this? I would probably you do a, a, a bear put debit spread to trade this to the downside. Remember, we've got earnings coming up when, uh, earnings coming up on, uh, let me get that number in there, about June 3rd, around June 3rd. And so that's the uh, NVDA. NVDA is a toss-up. It really is. Why? Well, one, NVDA, keep an eye on it. We are over in the oversold condition, positive. The market forecast is in the oversold condition, two-line cluster. What happens with a two-line cluster? Oftentimes, one to four trading periods after the two-line cluster, we'll get a reversal signal. We are at a long term going all the way back to when uh, January of this year support level where we bounced before. So I'm watching for a reversal signal. I had a bullish harami on Wednesday, which was then uh, voided when price actions on Thursday went, you know, basically showed a bearish type candlestick and broke below the uh, low of this day right here. So what am I looking at this? This could gap and go. It, it is very clear 
close to support. I would lay in an alert about the 208, 209 level. So if it rings, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my, my you know, I, my price to show me a bullish reversal signal, which would be a hammer, a, 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 a inverted hammer, a morning star type of uh, bullish engulfing pattern, one of those for a potential trade. Where would I likely to ride it to? Back up towards the 200-day moving average. May not get much further than that. So that's what uh, NVDA, NVDA, like I said, close. We'll see if we get the cigar. And then the, the last one I really like is COP. Now, COP is... A, an oil stock, of course, is ConocoPhillips. Uh, price action has you know, started to come up off of a support area around the zero line on, T on the TSI. We're getting a close above the eight-day moving average. So that could be a buy right where it's at with a stop where? Well, if, if that was my buy, my stop would be down below these past lows here which should be a little, a little bit over 4%, let's say 4.5%, uh, because if this is going to go into a uptrend or a continuation with the uptrend, it shouldn't be visiting this neighborhood down here. That, that neighborhood's been condemned for it. So if it jumps down and jumps down there, it's time to say, bye, I'm out of here, aloha. Uh, what's my first initial target up there? About 106. You could do that as an option trade and or just buy, buy the stock outright. If we get into a longer term move, we're probably looking at 115. Earnings coming up when? Earnings coming up on uh, about the 3rd of May, 3rd of May. So those are the stocks I'm looking at, folks. Let me know. Leave a comment about what you think about those stocks. And then let's cover the what I wanted to talk about a little bit today is Always be working on trying to polish up your routine. And one of the things that I've been working on uh, to be able to present to people is a three-step setup routine uh, that you take this into consideration. It is worked into our uh, grading outline for grading each individual setup on whether you should take it or not. If you haven't had a chance to get a, get a hold of that, you can basically just drop me an email and I will make sure that we forward that to you. I want you to become an active trend trader member. So what does the three steps include? Well, one, price. I want to pay attention to the price. Is it trending? And which way is it trending? Is the trend short or long term? Location of my price. Is it close to support or close to resistance? And then do I have a candlestick reversal signal? Those are three of the important things I need to know about. the. That's the first part of my setup. Number two, has my momentum shifted from either down to up or up to down? In other words, is my momentum in the overbought condition where it would be high, or is it in the oversold condition where it would be in the lower reversal zone? And there's one other option on that. Or if I'm in a strong uptrend, the momentum shift, the TSI that I use, will pull back to about the midsection and then bounce from there. So that's number st setup step. Set three steps. That's our second step. And then the last step is define your trigger. What's going to get you into the trade with a conditional order? And you want to remind yourself, I want to buy at wholesale. So if I'm going to buy at wholesale, I'm not going to necessarily buy at the new high. That's, to me, not a great place to buy. And I want to consider, and I will identify where I want to sell it, because that helps me define what my, uh, uh, my, my, um, uh, risk ratio that I need to know. So for that, hey, get these three steps into your routine for higher probability trading. Uh, it will make a huge difference and, and just practice it. We're going to be covering a lot of this, more of this on the uh, uh, active trend trading, some of the active trend trading uh, training that's going to be coming up. And so with that, hey, remember what Henry Ford had to say? If you always do what you've always done, You'll always get what you've always got. So the thing about that is what that tells me is go back and sometimes relearn what you may have forgotten from your past trading, especially the good parts. Uh, for whatever reason it is, 
Traders oftentimes get locked into repeating their mistakes rather than repeating their successes. So switch that or switch the book on that one. You know, write a new end to your story. So, hey, do you struggle with this one? Spending over two hours per week finding strong trade setups. If you do, you are a perfect candidate for the autopilot trading service. And you can go over here to autopilot <coughs> activetrendtrading.com, autopilot on YouTube, and that will tell you what the uh, trading service is all about. And uh, again, we're beating the S&P by over 20% this year, guys. And so it's worth taking a test flight for three months. See if it fits your trading style. With that, there's a QR code. You can take you right over to the page. So remember, all the materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. And past performance, of course, is no indication or promise of future performance. So, hey, remember in 2022, we're finding it very real that patience and persistence and consistency are critical elements to being successful in the market. Secondly, hey, aloha, trade well, prosper. You know, have a wonderful Easter and uh, mahalo. God bless everybody.